All the things I told y'all before the game came out is literally happening. Like, I told you paint defense was kind of eh. I told you fading on this game is very similar to 2K22. I told you that literally people are going to dribble behind half court to save adrenaline on this game. And everything that I'm saying is actually happening. I told y'all guys, also, big builds are going to mostly take over this game, just like a prior 2K21 next year. But look, today I'm going to be showing you how to fade on NBA 2K23. As of other games like 2K21 next gen, fading was ridiculous and having a big builder that can fade is actually crazy. But as of 2K22 current gen, y'all know, you can fade on that game, but it was really no point of fading on that game. But as of actually playing 2K22 next gen, y'all know, it was really fade galore. Like, everybody could fade, especially with Circus 3s and Sniper being in the game. But right now, I'm going to be showing you some of the best dribble pull-ups, aka fades, on NBA 2K23. As of this, this is normal fade. This is the fade you might be seeing a lot with the taller builds. This is one of the best fades in the game. As a Pro 2, it's cool. It's just based on your preference if you don't like normal. As a Pro 2, it's a great one, but I'm gonna talk more about these fades in later in the video. As of this one, this is for 6'5 and under. Bradley Bill has one of the best dribble pull-up fades, and it has a decent fade, but I wouldn't use it over another one that I'm about to show you. Stephen Curry, if you can get the timing right with Stephen Curry, it's just based on preference. It's a cool fade, but it has its disadvantages versus the other ones I'm about to show you. As a Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan is maybe the second best fade on this game. And then the next one is Trey Young. This is the best fade on the game as a guard. If you're playing on a guard, Trey Young fade is literally one of the best fades on the game that you can end up using. But as I'm telling y'all that, there are two different ways of fade on this game. You can fade with R2 or without R2. And it's a lot of different fades in the game that you can choose from that you gotta actually know. Oh, I have to hold R2 to fade, or I don't have to hold R2 to fade. And there's a few things that will affect your actual fade time or a dribble pull-up time, and that can be your actual jump shot rating. And some of you guys might already know this. The higher your jump shot, the higher chance you got to hit it, but it also comes with the timing. But another thing that can really affect your actual timing, the stamina, adrenaline, those are key things. Those are the main two key things that you need to know. Once you do that, you'll be perfect. But as of someone that's trying to learn how to fade on this game, I'm gonna show you a post fade first. This is one thing that helped me learn how to actually do like dribble pull-ups before I actually started getting to it. If you learn how to post fade, you're gonna actually learn how to do dribble pull-ups because the timing is very similar. As long as you know how to do a back shoulder, same shoulder, you will be able to time your fades because it's literally the somewhat same timing, but the only thing you gotta incorporate is the when you have stamina, including that. So now we're gonna be working with the actual Stephen Curry dribble fade, and then we're gonna actually work with the Trey Young dribble fade. As you're seeing right now, this is Stephen Curry dribble fade. It is cool. I would rate it out a 7 out of 10, but it's a lot of different hitches on this jump shot that really makes it somewhat eh. As you're doing a fade, sometimes it's going to be faster. So as I'm showing you that dribble pull-up, I'm going to show you this Trey Young dribble pull-up. Hands down the best dribble pull-up in the game, especially for little guards. So if you're under 6'5", I definitely would prefer you to put this dribble pull-up on your build. But if I had to rate this actual dribble pull-up, I would say it's like a 9, 9.5, S tier, A tier. So as I told you, this is a 9R2 fade. So with doing this, you're gonna run to the direction that you wanna go to. If you wanna do go to the left, you run to the left, let go of R2, hold square, and you will end up getting a fade animation just like this. And to let you guys know, I am shooting with the shot time release on late. So this is what I usually shoot on. If you're someone that's using something else, I would tell you it's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to releasing the ball. But as you look at the release of how I'm shooting the ball, you can tell when to release it. Once he get that part and when his body is fully turning and his arms is going up, that's when I usually release the ball. But as of right there, that was a non R2 actual fade. But as of the one I just took, this is a R2 fade. As of taking the R2 fade, you see my body went backwards. As of doing this, it gives me a whole different animation. This is what you don't wanna do when you use this Trey Young fade. Holding R2, this is giving you a little pushback, but I would tell you this now. If you end up learning both of these fades with R2 and without R2, you're gonna be unstoppable. That's one thing I can tell you. If you learn all the timings when they got low stamina, a lot of stamina, and you do R2 and no R2, you're gonna be very hard to guard when it comes to fading but it also comes down with your timing as well because this takes a lot of practice to learn all those different timings but as of trey young one of the best fades for a guard but if you're someone that does not like trey young you will end up having to throw in that normal fade if you are on a smaller build or a curry but as of taller builds i know y'all want to know what's a good one for my 6'8 or my 6'9 or builds like that and i got y'all boys i'm gonna show y'all the best fades that you can put on for your 6'8 6'9 7 footer 
these are going to be the ones that you're going to end up using as of normal normal is a great fade to use i see a lot of people using normal fade when it comes to playing on this game but the one thing about this fade it definitely feels like i hold this one longer than my trey young fade it definitely does feel like i have to hold this way longer than when it is with my trey young fade so if you want to hold it way longer and you're someone that's going to be able to time it use normal fade because bro I can tell you if I hop on my 6-8 right now trying to fade with this, it's going to be very hard to do versus my 6-8. My 6-8 is way slower with, for my 6-4 or 6-1 just because my player is smaller and I have a higher three-point rating on those builds. But as of playing on a 6-8 with like an 86 three-pointer or even if you got a 6-8 or a 6-9 with a 92 three-pointer, it's going to feel way slower than a 6-1 with a 92 three-pointer just because of the height of the build. As you look at this fade, you have to hold it until you come down. Once your arm is about to literally fully extend out, that's when I usually release R2 when it comes to this fade. Because every time I try to release this when I think it's actually going up, it's usually a slightly early or early. You're going to release it when your arms are somewhat close to fully extending forward in front of your body. Because every time I do it without that, I usually shoot an early, a slightly early, and it literally throws me off almost every time. Mostly when his arms is fully extended when it comes to shooting this ball, it literally goes in every time. But you see, I shot an early right there, and it literally was showing just because of my stamina, plus I didn't let my arms fully extend to green it. As you see, I had that much stamina that I just shot before, and I greened the same shot, but from deeper, just from taking my time. Now for this actual dribble pull-up. This is the one that's very similar to Trey Young. As I told you, when you use R2 with Trey Young, it looks very similar to the Michael Jordan one. And when you end up using a regular Michael Jordan R2 fade, it looks very similar to the Trey Young R2 like I showed y'all. But look, as of playing with this and using the dribble pull-up, Michael Jordan pull-up is definitely a great pull-up to use because once you learn the time before it, you're going to green very consistently because sometimes you can get some crazy space from it just because it pushes your my player back. And especially if you got a build that got a high three-pointer, I'll say at least like an 85, 83, you can hit very consistently. But as of the release point on this jump shot, it is very easy. Once you see his arms go up, it's the one where it fully extend. It's a fully extend forward. But as I'm going over, it's a fully extend forward. As you see him lean, his arms fully extend up. That's when I usually release it. And it's green every single time. And also with this dribble pull up, you can shoot from very far with this. You can definitely fade from very far and hit some half court shots, some half court fades. The thing about this fade, you can fade with R2 with it, but it's gonna give you a whole different animation but it's mostly to with your actual shooting hand. So if you're right-handed and you're gonna try to fade without R2, it can give you a decent fade, but it's not gonna be as good as using the R2 fade on this actual dribble pull-up. But look, if this helps y'all boys learn how to fade on NBA 2K23, hey man, drop a like for me, subscribe, put on post notifications, check out those two videos on the screen real quick. It might end up making you become a better 2K player. But look, it being your man, Shamama, I'ma see y'all boys in the next one, and I'm out.